Hello everyone and welcome back to CIS 165. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. So we're starting now week three of our class and let's take a look at a lesson uh, involving chapter two of our book. Chapter two is basic JavaScript instructions. So again, the first few chapters are rudimentary if you've got experience in programming but they lay the foundations for important concepts later on, especially if you're new. So to set ourselves up, uh, I need a week three folder on my computer. So I'll create a week three. And I've got that index file that I created last time, which is a basic template file. I'm going to get a copy of that into my week three. And then I'll open this project in visual code. So I've launched Microsoft Visual Code. It still remembers my previous project, my week two project. So you'll probably have to go to File Menu, Close Folder, then Open Folder, and Open Week 3. Week 3 then has our index.html file. And so here I have my starting point of a template file that I created previously. So what we're going to do for this week is deal with variables, statements, arrays, and more JavaScript objects. The concept will be that we will create various arrays of data and then display that data on screen. So to set ourselves up, let's create the HTML elements that we'll display to the user, and then we'll create JavaScript code to write content to those elements. So let's see. Um, first of all, our title here, we can say chapter two, H1. Okay, this is going to be the most valuable comics on eBay. Now, one of my hobbies, as you saw from the discussions, is that I like to read and collect comic books. So we're going to have lots of lessons about cool stuff like that. This is going to be a collection of valuable comics that we find on eBay. This will be an ordered list of comics. So we've got the HTML element of OL, ordered list and list item. In order for us to reference this HTML element in JavaScript, we need to identify it somehow. One way to do it is by adding an ID. So I could say li comic one. These can be named whatever we want, of course. But here I'm naming this. It's a list item. It's a comic. It's comic number one. So I need five of these. each with the individualized number. Via JavaScript, we will be able to reference each of these. I also then want to display a message about the comics. So here we'll create a div, a plain old div. It's a generic container, also with an ID. Div message. So I like to, this is personal, but I like to prefix these IDs, these identifiers, with what kind of element it is, and then the specifically named element. These can be named anything we want. I often see these as ID equals MSG for message, or ID equals output, whatever you want, whatever makes sense. So jumping now down to the JavaScript, think about it in these terms. The code in the JavaScript block needs to reach out to affect the code in the HTML block, in the body block. Whatever exists inside of script doesn't exactly know what's happening inside of the HTML block. So we need to create JavaScript objects that represent HTML nodes. We need to create basically JavaScript variables that reference HTML tags. So inside of my JavaScript block, I'll start off with var to create a variable, elli comic1, 
equals. So element list item comic one. This is going to be like a shorthand for the HTML code up on line 12. Document dot get element by ID open close parentheses. Notice the spelling. This is a very common mistake for many JavaScript beginners. Get element by ID, lowercase g, capital E, capital B, capital I, but not a capital D. Oftentimes beginners write capital I, capital D, which is wrong. It must be capital I, lowercase d. So you might be able to understand what's about to happen here. In the document object, which is the main viewport, basically, let's get an element by its ID. This is the method. Do something upon this object. Let's get an element by its ID. So in the parentheses in quotes, the ID is li comic one. So this code here on the right side of the equals is saying, let's get an element by its ID and let's reference it shorthand as el li comic one. Element list item comic one. And I want to do the same thing for the other ones. So instead of ending this with a semicolon, which would be end of statement, I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to continue my statement. Let's create another variable. L list item comic two is equal to document dot get element by ID parentheses quote list item comic two. And I need to do the exact same thing three more times, comma. So I'll just copy this, paste it, paste it, paste it. And all I need to change is, well, now I'm dealing with L list item, element list item, comic three, and I'm getting LI comic three, comma. Don't forget these commas at the end of these lines, because all of these commas mean we are creating a variable and another one and another one and another one. So the next one is list item four, L list item four, L list item five, list item five. And here we do need the semicolon. This semicolon ends the statement that we create, that we started right here, var. Let's create a variable, an object. And we created one, comma, we created another one, comma, and another comma, and another, don't forget that comma. And then we end the statement semicolon. Enter, create another variable. This time we'll call it L div message. This will be a reference to document dot get element by ID quotes div message. Spelling matters. So this is wrong. It's div capital message. That's what I have up above, semicolon. Now I could have created my LDiv message as part of my first variable declarations over here. That would have been just fine. I would have just needed a comma and continued LDiv message. Perfectly fine. I wanted to separate them conceptually, visually. These are all my variables. These are all my objects that represent these list items. And then this is my object that represents this div. Perfectly fine. Next, another variable declaration. We will call this comic name equal to, this time square brackets. You should always read the book before watching these videos for this to fully make sense. And the book tells us that the square brackets is the syntax for writing an array. And an array is a collection of variables, of objects. LDiv message is referencing only one object, div message. This variable will reference several, several sub variables, so to speak, sub objects. This is going to be a collection of a few comic books. So let's say here in quotes, Amazing Spider-Man, number 300. This is in quotes because it's a string. 
the book tells us we have string data types, numeric data types, etc. So the type of data that I'm storing here is a string. And we saw this on the previous lesson too. Let me mention another one, comma, quotes, spawn number one. So I've got two comic book titles, two names of comics saved in my variable comic name, comma. I then also want to create an array, comic price, square brackets as well. So the first comic is Amazing Spider-Man. And let's say that one costs $100. I'm not putting the dollar symbol. I'm not using quotes. This is a numeric data type. It deals with a number. The comic name deals with a string. And the comic price deals with a number. Spawn number one, let's say $25. I'm just kind of making up these prices comma, another variable, comic, price, total. I want to add up the prices of both of these comics. So comic, price, brackets, zero. I'm saying the zero with object in the comic price variable. In most computer programming languages, we start counting from zero. So zero position is 100. One position is 25. If we had a third price, it would be position two. So I'm saying, let's get comic price zero with position, which is 100. And let's add comic price position one, which is the second value. Let's add the two end of statement, semicolon. Let's add whatever the value is of position one plus the position zero and store that in the variable comic price total. No, no square brackets because I'm not dealing with an array, I'm dealing with a more plain variable, a more plain object. Comic name is a more complex object because it has two sort of properties, but not really properties, two values. Spider-Man 300, spawn number one. Comic price is an array and it has two values, $100 and $25. And then comic price total is the total price. Before we display any of this on screen, I'm gonna display it in the console just to see if I'm on the right track. And I highly recommend, especially for beginners, to really rely on console.log a lot to output messages to yourself as the designer, as the programmer. So for example, if I output comic name, I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna go to my folder to run the code. Nothing happens on screen yet. That's why we need to open up the developer's console, which is F12 on the keyboard, or you can right-click, inspect, console. My log output line 34 tells me I've got an array with two items, Amazing Spider-Man and Spawn. Zero with position, first position. That's exactly what I have here. Zero with position, first position. Let's say I add another one. Comma, quotes, let's add Archie's Madhouse number 22. Save that. Refresh. Again, the quirk of Chrome is that apparently when you refresh, your output looks a little bit different compared to when you close it and run it again. But again, I've got an array of three and now it shows it here. Here's the three items, zero, one, and two. Just again to show you, if I ran this completely from the beginning, F12, the result looks a little like that. An array of three objects, zero, one, and two. All right, no errors, that's what I expect. Let's say console log, this time comic price, 
I want the first price. So this time, this is when I specify brackets 0. Not 1, because we're starting to count from 0. Give me the comic price of the 0 with position. Run this again. My first output, line 34, shows the three comics. Line 35 then says 100, because it got the value of the 0 width position, which is 100. If I had a third price, let's say $623.25, that result now, if I say give me the third price, we count, start counting from 0. So 0, 1, 2. Refreshing that gives me the third value. Lastly, console log comic price total. Refreshing 125. Well, I expected that to be higher, didn't you? 100 plus 25 plus 623 is much more than simply 125. Well, that's because my algorithm, my calculation for comic price total, only added up the zero width and the first value, not the new third one. Okay, well, let's add then the third value, zero number two position 2. Now when I save that and run it, we get the full value. So this console log output is invaluable for the programmer because it helps you figure out if your code is on the right track, if it makes sense, if there's errors and such. So here I've shown that I can list all of the comics, a specific price, and the price of everything. I want to start displaying some of this on screen now. So we can use the shorthand L list item comic one, that's the object. We can then say dot text content capital C. The property text content of the object L list item comic one. We're going to set the property of this object. It's going to be equal to comic name zero. Running this, remember to save, then run. On screen displays Amazing Spider-Man number 300 in the first list item. So we have the HTML object, its property, set to, so the equal is basically set to, whatever's in the array, position zero. It should be obvious then, L list item, comic two dot text content equal to comic name position one semicolon. Set the second list item to the second item in the array. Well, I also want to display the price of each of these. So I've displayed the name of the comic. I also want to display the price. So we're going to add to the text content with a plus symbol. This plus symbol is different than the one on line 32. On line 32, I'm adding numbers. This is a number because that's what the array is full of. Numbers, no quotes. This plus symbol is going to add strings. This, the fancy term is concatenation. We are going to build a sentence. So we're going to say then, display the comic name plus the comic price of the zero width comic. That'll display the name and the price. That'll be great, right? Yes and no. It's going to literally write what was in the array of strings plus what was in the array of numbers without any nice 
looking results. So we have to be more specific. Let's say, let me take it back just to, let me undo that just to uh, show you what we're going to do here. Let's uh, add in quotes, space dash, space plus. This should be very reminiscent from the uh, first homework. We're going to build a string out of dynamic elements and static elements. Now the result looks like that. The name of the comic, the price of the comic. Usually a comic has the dollar symbol and such. All right, so here's a trick. Inside of the string, we will add that dollar symbol because it's going to display a space between the name of the comic, then a dash, then a space, then a dollar symbol, then the comic price. Looks good. I need the same thing for comic two and comic three. Copying and pasting is invaluable. Try to do it as much as possible, but be careful. You want to copy and paste something that works, and most likely you're going to need to change it a little bit. So obviously here I have to say comic price. And what I mean that it works is you've tested that the code works before copying and pasting, because you can copy code that doesn't work, and it will not work several times. So checking that result, Spawn number one, $25. So now I can save myself some effort by copying that whole line, pasting it, and I need to change comic price to comic name to and El Comic 3. Now again, all of these pop-ups that you get from Visual Code could be very useful. You can click the info item to read more. You can click on these hints to give you even more information. They can be really helpful. This result shows the third comic displayed on screen. Now we've also got the comic total price, and we've also got a div to display a message. In that div, I want to display these comics together are worth X dollars. Next line, L div message dot text content equal to quotes, end of statement, the total value of these comics is dollar space plus comic price total. Save that, refresh it, and now that div, which, is, which was there all along in the viewport, and it has actual content, so there's something to look at, and it says the total value of these comics is 748, which is exactly what's adding up here on the console. So the console, again, is very useful to understand what you're trying to do, because then you see what has happened on screen in the viewport. So let's say I wanted to display the, the three most valuable comics, or the five most valuable, or the 50 most valuable. So if I want that to be displayed up on top here, you might think, well, I'll go back and write the five most valuable comics on eBay. But I need to go back every single time and change that value if I have more comics stored in the array. And right now I've only got three. So putting the five most valuable doesn't make sense. We can use JavaScript to dynamically change that value based on the number of comics in the array. So we saw that we can dynamically change the value of what's inside of this div and what's inside of this list item. We can do that also with that number. So let's say we'll go back to the code, the HTML block, line 9. Let's say the X most valuable comics. So I want to wrap a span tag around X. This is an HTML tag. It's like a generic placeholder. We can target what's inside of this markup in JavaScript, just like we targeted what's inside of list item and what's inside of div with an ID. So span 
ID equals quotes span total comics. This is a span that is going to display the total number of comics. Just like before, we needed to create variables to represent those elements. So I've got variables for the list items, a variable for the message, a variable for the actual data. I'm going to add another variable to the variable definition I have on line 28, which is the LDIV message. Now be careful here. I'm going to remove the semicolon and add a comma because I'm continuing the variable declaration. L span total comics. And notice the changing of the spelling. Um, you can keep it all lowercase, you can mix your capitals and such. This is a common way to do it. The first word is lowercase and then subsequent words are with capitals. Element span total comics is equal to document dot get element by ID which ID span total comics and then end of statement semicolon. So now I have a way to reference this HTML node, this HTML code, because I've created a JavaScript object. So I wrote data, text content, into three of those bullet points. I wrote text content into the actual message area. Next, I'll write text content into L span total comics dot text content property equal to. What will this be equal to? I want this to be equal to the number of comics stored in comic name. So comic name dot length, the length property. Comic name is an object, a JavaScript object, and it has a variety of properties, such as the data inside of it. And one of the properties is length, the number of items in that array. Now when I run this, the three most valuable comics on eBay because I've got three items in my array. Never mind that I've got five bullet points. I've only got three items in the array. But what's great about this is as I change that array, that number will also change. I'll add another comic here. Let's see, Spider-Man, Spawn, Archie, comma. Let's do Batman number 635. We'll give it its price as well. Uh, let's say 125.98. We have to then update here comic price total. We need to add then the fourth comic. So comic price three. So all four comic values are being added up and stored in the total. I've got a fourth comic price and I've got a fourth comic book. Saving all of that, refreshing, we've got four comics. They've been added up to 874. It didn't display on screen and I, I think you understand why not, which I'll fix in a moment, but you see this data changed dynamically on screen. It didn't automatically write the fourth one in the bullet points because this is an example again of why computers are dumb. They don't know what I want. In my mind, I had the perfect idea of what I wanted, but on screen what happened? Nothing until I program it. So I need to add a reference to the L comic four text content, comic three, fourth item, third position, and comic price, third position, fourth value. The result is then the fourth comic is displayed. I'll wrap up with the fifth comic, something recent. You can do saga number one. That one's getting up in value. I think I saw it's getting at like $150, $152, $52, let's say. 
So we need to add that fourth one. And yes, there is an easier way to add up all of these prices, but at the level of knowledge we have so far, we're not quite there yet. There is going to be a way to iterate line 33 to automate line 33. We're not quite there yet, so we have to do it manually. And same thing here. These will be done manually. There's always going to be a way to do this more automated, but it requires more knowledge. Should be pretty quick to do at this point. Refresh the five most valuable comics. One through five, all display on screen. Total value is there. Now you may think, well, what about commas? Some of you will get a weird result in the sense. We're not quite there yet, so don't worry too much about it. Let's see if I can force what I'm trying to do. Let's say uh, $100.01, $25.25. $25. For some people, I've seen that the, the cents add up into like hundredths of a cent. It's not doing it for me, but if you see that happening, one way to fix it is we're saying down here, line 45, let's display the comic price total. And sometimes there's a quirk when we add up numbers. So if you're getting weird results in your, in your cents, we can do comic price total dot to fixed parentheses. This is the method to fixed. We're going to fix the cents to two positions. So if you get some weird results in your cents, try adding two fixed, and all that will happen is that your multiple repeating cents should become only two digits. For the moment, don't worry that there's no comma right there. That actually takes a little bit more effort than we want to do at the moment. But here's our result. Based on chapter two, we've looked at more basic JavaScript instructions, creating variables again, but this time creating arrays, which are more complex types of variables. They hold more data. We then created something pretty cool, JavaScript objects of HTML nodes. This is a very common thing to do, creating nicknames for HTML elements and then changing the properties of those HTML elements to write something new. A little bit of simple math, checking the length of arrays, and these basic concepts will help us in many future activities. So this has been Victor Campos. See you next time.